you could almost miss the signpost for one of the largest infrastructure projects in Peru's history. The road that is being built here will finally link, through a network of already completed highways, Brazil's Atlantic coast to Peru's Pacific ports. All of this signage was designed with manifest destiny as the theme, very much like we did in the United States a couple centuries ago. That's Bruce Babbitt, former Secretary of the Interior under President Bill Clinton. The concern, says Babbitt, is how these projects will impact the Peruvian Amazon, which the Interoceanic will cut through when it's finished. It's the greatest source of untrammeled biodiversity and wilderness on this whole planet. But roads also carry benefits, and here in Muñapata, the project is a welcome one. Christina Yubangi rings up a bottle of soda pop in her brand new store. She just opened up her shop here a week ago, selling drinks and snacks to passing drivers. She's saying that the, um, that, that the road has brought prosperity for this community because most of the people in this community work on the road mm -hmm. and get money from the road. The intro oceanic here cuts through the dramatic scenery of the Andes, snow-capped peaks, deep ravines powdered with clouds. Most of the work in this area is already done, but as the road winds its way down, the dazzling scale of the engineering project still underway becomes visible. There are a string of massive camps housing thousands of workers lining the highway. The men and women live here, working in day and night shifts. The road works never stop. This is a 24-hour operation that is literally carving the road into the brutal rock face of the Andes. The company that is overseeing all this is Odebrecht, an enormous Brazilian firm similar in scope to America's Halliburton. Paulino Kapchka works for Odebrecht, overseeing one of the work crews. He tells us he's worked on many road projects, and from what he's seen, wherever roads go, prosperity for the communities who live along it follows. It's important to have this road for the development of our country in this region. It's an important route that will open up trade between Brazil and Peru. That remains to be seen. The economic benefit of trucking, say, soybeans all the way to a Peruvian Pacific port are far from obvious. And some along the road here are worried about the less than positive changes that the Interoceanic has already brought. In the town of Quincemil, it rains all the time. Wags say the town was named after the 15,000 millimeters of precipitation it purportedly received one year. In her beer warehouse, Rocio Ramirez sits in a plastic chair, watching the water sluice down a dirt road. She says things are changing here. The price of everything has gone up because there are lots of new men living nearby and working on the road. I'm very worried. All these unknown people have arrived and there's been violence, men who are drunk, prostitution. Across the street, biologist Pedro Centero has his offices. He's worried about what this influx will mean to the nature in this area. On the one hand, he says, the road might promote ecotourism. But, he says, over the past few years, there has been an influx of Peruvians from the highlands who are migrating to the more fertile lowlands. They cut down trees and clear land for farming or work in the gold mines. He fears the road will only speed up that process. The problem is that Peru has some very good laws on the protection of flora and fauna, but the issue is that those laws are not enforced. The government is in charge of making sure those laws are observed, but it does nothing, practically speaking. Bruce Babbitt says he got involved with this remote corner of the world because what happens here is vital. If we destroy the biological heritage of the Andes and the Amazon basin, we're impoverishing Peruvians, Brazilians, uh, and Americans and indeed the entire world. The road out of Quincemil is barely a dirt track. The improvements have not begun here yet. Suddenly, a river swollen by rain cuts across our way forward. All right, we're going to try and cross the river. Andale, andale. And we are through. We did. We did. Awesome. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Lourdes Garcia Navarro, NPR News.